Um, I wanted to wish a good morning to uh, the two consul generals of uh, Greece and Cyprus, respectively, uh, Mr. Menedakis and uh, Mr. Mastorados. Uh, everyone who is here, I want to thank you. Um, Greek and non-Greek, I have a feeling I will be uh, uh, featured on the Human Team Voice uh, magazine very soon. But uh, that's okay. I welcome everybody. Uh, dialogue is what is required, and uh, an academic, uh, an academic perspective into uh, the problems that uh, that include the problem of the naming issue with our northernmost neighbor. Where do I stem from? My family stems from Macedonia, Kastoria, in Greece. Uh, my great-grandfather on my maternal side was uh, the first priest to be ordained during the Macedonian struggle by Bishop Evangelis uh, to oppose the exorcist uh, Hungarian uh, priests uh, who were sent there by the exorcist um, around the time of the turn of the 20th, uh, 19th to the 20th century. Uh, my mother was one of the 28,000 children that were taken from their homes without their consent by communists at the time of the Greek Civil War. She spent about seven years in Romania under weird conditions uh, where she was told that she was not Greek, that she was something else. At the time, they were called Slavo Macedonians. This is what the Greek communists were called. Um, Bulgarophile, Slavophile individuals who uh, were um, pro a, uh, a separation of Northern Greece from Southern Greece into a Balkan confederation of communist nations. Um, I do have relatives who did not have their families with them in the Iron Curtain uh, who have now stayed in Skopje, who have settled in uh, the former Yugoslav Republic and who believe that there has been a, a genocide perpetrated against what they like to call Macedonians by Greeks. And <coughs> so I have that historical background. Um, it's interesting because those individuals who are my mother's cousins would play with my mom, would go to Greek church, would learn the Greek language, would be Greeks prior to their transfer over to the Iron Curtain. And to this day, they call themselves Macedonian warriors, or Gorzi Macedonians. Um, the other side of my family, my father's grandfather, so my my maternal my paternal great grandfather was Bishop Karavangelis' right hand man. He was his um, messenger, and uh, he was the one who buried uh, the body of uh, Pavlos Melas. Uh, so, what is uh, Macedonism? Well, there's it's an attempt to create a nation, an ethnicity. A language, and where's my... No, it did It was working. Anyway, that's all right. Um, the attempt to create a nation, an ethnicity, a language, a religion, and a history by using the term Macedonian, Macedonia. It is a type of propaganda. And what is that? Where did it start from? Well, all of this idea that there was a Macedonia that has existed throughout the centuries that is not Greek, that was never Greek, that only started to, um, the, the reason why this was done was because of Pan-Slavic dreams. Around the time of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, uh, toward the fall of the Ottoman Empire, uh, there was this idea among the Slavic people of the Balkans, um, using Russia as their main background supporter, that there needs to be a huge Slavic nation that has to be created. What Russia wanted to do was to get access to the Aegean. The reason why? is because the port of Thessaloniki does not freeze. It is a warm water port. It can never be closed. It is one of the most important ports in the Balkans. So, strategically, geopolitically, and the rest. So what happened? Well, Russia wanted to get access to the Aegean and use Bulgaria, the first Slavic people to fell. They aren't initially Slavs. Bulgarians are not initially Slavs. Initially, they are a Turkic people that have been Slavicized through the ages. However, using Bulgaria at the time, which they were already Slavicized, they said, this is what we're going to do. You need to go to Constantinople, Istanbul, now. You need to go to the Sultan and ask that you create your own church. The reason why this was done was because 
during the Byzantine Empire, the Patriarchate in Constantinople was the main Greek Orthodox Church. Uh, was the main church, actually, of the, East, uh, the Eastern Roman Empire. And the only way that the Turks could realize who was Christian, who was not Christian, was if you were following the Patriarchate, you were Greek. So what the uh, what Russia wanted to do is they approached uh, they approached the, the Sultan, and I will show you what exactly happened after that. There's two types of masculinism. The initial masculinism was pro-Bulgarian. As I mentioned, Bulgaria was used as the first nation to yell out calls saying that Macedonians uh, exist, they have to be a nation, and however, what Bulgaria was doing at the time was using the term as a geographical qualifier, meaning that everybody who was there is Macedonian, in their mind, they're like, well, they're Bulgarian, and they have to become independent. So we had groups like the VMRO, which is uh, one of the initial Bulgarian groups that started up from Bulgarian influences. The current political party in Skopje is called the VMRO. It is a descendant of the original group, pro-Bulgarian group in the Balkans. Um, and then Moving on, following uh, the events in the 20th century, Serbia wanted a control of the area, then came communism, and under communism was when it officially, in 1943, a new country, or a new federal country inside a federal state of Yugoslavia was created called the People's Republic of Macedonia. Why was this done? We'll talk about it. Initially, this was a pro-communist movement, then, it, after the fall of communism, especially in the last 20 years, it has become a nationalist movement within Skopje. The idea at the time was, at around the time of the uh, turn of the 20th century, beginning of communist aspirations in the 20s and 30s, they wanted a Switzerland of the Balkans, a multi-ethnic state in the Balkans that, that, that is under communist rule, uh, that would encompass lands in northern Greece. Not killed. When Samuel saw all his army come back, blind and maimed, he actually, there are sources that say he committed suicide, there are sources that say that he died of a broken heart, I suppose. Um, anyway, next slide. So, Bulgaria. That was the beginning of the Macedonian problem in modern time. Let's go. Next slide. What happened around the time of Pan-Slavic Russia or Pan-Slavic idea in the Balkans? This guy here, Nikolai Pavlovich Ignatiev. Do you guys recognize um, this last name? Who is uh, Canada's um, leader of the opposition? Michael Ignatiev. Michael Ignatiev. This guy is his great grandfather. Okay. This guy here um, was the ambassador of Russia at the Sublime Court in Istanbul, in Constantinople. Very smart man, shrewd man. Using Russia's ideas, went up to next slide. This guy here, Sultan Abdulaziz. He was the leader of the Ottoman Empire at the time, and he told him, I want to create a Bulgarian church, because I want to create a Bulgarian nation. Why? Because a Slavic nation under the influence of Russia, that goes all the way down to the Aegean, would allow Russia to have access to the warm water ports of the Aegean. Because my great-grandfather was a patriarchist priest. <coughs> if the Bulgarian committee could convince the rest of the village that a, Bulgar that a, that a Greek priest sister would have swayed and turned to the Bulgarian church, then their cause in that village was done. And a Bulgarian priest could be sent, and a Bulgarian school teacher could also be sent. Next slide, please. Next slide. This is from Wikipedia. They claim that a political and military organization created by an ethnic Macedonian minority in Greece existed at the time that the Yugoslavs supported. Next slide. They write about an exodus of ethnic, and this is where I come to my mother's story and to my family's story, that the government forces destroyed every village that was on their way and expelled the civilian population. It is among popular belief that the Greek government used napalm on villages uh, that, had, that included ethnic Macedonians to destroy and cause a genocide on the population. Do you know to this day there has not been any evidence, any recorded evidence that the Greek government bombed villages? My mother and her village were removed from their houses by force by the communist guerrillas and forced to live in the surrounding um, forests and the surrounding hills where, yes, 
they were bombed because the Greek government forces thought that they were rebels in the in, in the woods. Why would there be women and children living in the woods? Next slide, please. Oh, going back. This is the Prime Minister of Skopje uh, welcoming uh, a prince of, uh, of a Hunza tribe from Pakistan, saying that, welcome to our ancient Macedonians. You are descendants of Alexander the Great. Flown in by Turkish Airlines, thank you very much. I uh, wanted to point out that Turkey is a big supporter of uh, Skopje's diaspora, paying $150,000 to the United Macedonian diaspora uh, in 2009, and then the other $150,000 came from their own diaspora, including $50,000 last year from John Bitov, one of the largest supporters of the UND here in Toronto. Next slide. Anything on this issue? Um, I welcome you to uh, certainly work with uh, there's two Canadian uh, politicians of Greek uh, origin. Uh, there is born Greek and there's a couple of others that also have Greek backgrounds. This has to be brought into the House of Commons. I haven't seen the name and evidence to give evidence to any of our, uh, our committees. And that's probably not lack that you haven't tried or probably you haven't had the resources. One thing that we need to be clear about is that although the academia plays a great role, the academia influences our political offices. Of course. And when the academia influences the political offices, and there's people that are working in members' departments' office as well as ministers' office, and they have this influence, they very quickly can influence the politician and the wrong decision were made. That's a, a point that I, before, I sorry, a little parenthesis on your thing. The United Macedonian Diaspora and the Turkish Council of America paid 19, no, paid 18 congressmen, representatives of Congress, last year to travel to Skopje and Turkey to learn the history of Macedonia, etc., etc. When they came back, they wrote a letter to Obama stating that, please well, push. Let's, let's keep it low. Uh, yeah, of course. No, but I'm saying it's an example, example of right. what I mean. Money is what makes the... Money was made for all that, and also the Macedonians, uh, the, the Slavo Macedonians, yes. or the Skopians, as I have to politically call them, and they got the heck for it, they've got interns in the House of Commons <coughs> offices. And those interns, as well as the... Uh, if you want to call it the political uh, junkies and the operatives, they influence decisions. Unfortunately, we have not matched that. We're not capable of matching it, or we haven't taken those steps. We have nothing to prove. That's the problem. No, but we do have a lot to prove, sir, when the mad truth should have to be encountered by speeches such as you gave here. Uh, I think there's actually a, a okay, website, Mac News. Sorry, Mac News. Yes. But you, sir, have to come and enlighten the rest of my colleagues on what is Greece. So the fact that we have not seen you or heard of you, also may I ask of you, sir, to do the following, if I can. Well, there's no such thing as you're not a politician in Greek. One Greek, one political party, two Greeks, three political parties. My party, your party, our party. Sir, I would welcome you to send a letter to all the members of parliament. It's very simple. You just write it and email it to all of us, telling us what is there. And I'm sure that anybody here, because if I say I'd be delighted, delighted to help, the people think I'm blowing my own horn. But I think your speech, what we're hearing here today to the academic world, is step one. Step two, you got to make sure that it's heard in politics in Ottawa. Because when the Prime Minister stands up and he says, it's not fair from now on, it's Macedonia, and we as Greeks go and say to the Prime Minister, thank you very much for having us and all that stuff, and he turns around and all sells us up. Yeah. I think yeah. it's time that we have to take Canada the next step. Canada has I would welcome the opportunity for you to take the next step and to become politically involved in letting you know, I mean, not for you to run, to make sure that our officers know what is the real truth.